I'm going to show you step by step how to create a football model where you can select any two teams and the spreadsheet automatically displays the predicted result and the odds for each outcome. It also shows the predicted odds for the under and over goals markets plus the correct score market. You can compare the model's odds with the odds on Betfair to see if there's any opportunities for value. The model works using previous goal scoring data and I'm going to show you how you can configure the spreadsheet to give you results based on XG. Before we go through the step-by-step -step guide for creating this football model, there are a couple of things we need to go over. Firstly, all models are wrong, but some are useful, is a quote that is normally attributed to George Box, and well, it applies to, you guess it, all models, including this one right here, which I'm gonna show you in this video. Essentially, all models fall short of explaining all the complexities of anything that you're trying to model. So there are no models which can accurately predict a future reality. However, that doesn't mean that models and predictions are never useful because the model is giving you a prediction and it is based off real life data. It's just important to note that reality has too many variables to factor into the model, but the model is there to just give you an idea of how the game is likely to play based off the previous results of the two teams. That doesn't just mean you can simply look what the model says, go on to bet for if there's a discrepancy, then it has to be value. That isn't the case. I was just making that clear so I don't want anyone to be just using this model like it is gospel and using it to, on every single market you know football is just too highly variable this is why this model or any piece of information as a better or a trader should only be treated as a single piece of information when you put all the pieces together you get an idea of if there is an opportunity in the market or not briefly the model works on something called Poisson distribution which in this instance is being used to estimate the number of goals in a football game <laughs> the model uses mm. some relatively complicated maths but i'm not going to bore you with the details of what each of these things mean because to create this model you don't need to be a mathematician i'm going to tell you what you need to write in each cell of excel in order to create this model if you are interested in Poisson distribution and how it works there are tons of videos on youtube if you're interested in it like me but i presume most people aren't so i'm not going to bore you with the details also it is worth mentioning that i haven't created the idea of using plus on distribution to model football matches People have been doing this since the 1970s and 1980s. So I'm not taking credit for this method, but my spreadsheet I think is pretty cool. Like you can just put teams in and it works out automatically. This spreadsheet is a little bit complex and if you want to save the time and the effort of copying this video and copying it into Excel, I've uploaded all of these models onto my Patreon, which you can download yourself. So that is individual spreadsheets for the 2021-2022 season for the Premier League, La Liga, Bundesliga, French League and Serie A. The link to my Patreon is in the description box below and it means a lot to me for all the people currently supporting the channel. Without further ado, let's go into the step-by-step -step guide on how to make this model. The first thing we need when we're creating this model is data itself that we're gonna use. I personally use a site called understat.com. That is because it has both goal scoring data and XG data, XG tables. But you can use any site that you want. You have to just make sure that it can be separated between home and away and also organized so that it can be in alphabetical order for the league. That's very important. So alphabetical order and separation between home and away. Understat as well allows you to set the start date and the end date for the table. So if you don't want to use the entire date for the league so far, just like the last five games, for example, that is something you can do here by selecting the day and then you get the table. If you're interested in knowing what's the perfect number of games to use for this model, well, there is no perfect number. <laughs> That's the way it is. A general rule of thumb is that the the older the data goes, it becomes less and less relevant. However, the less games that you use, the less data you've got there, so your model becomes less accurate. It's a balancing game. It can be useful to create multiple different models of various different game amounts and get a broader idea of how the game might pan out. Once you've got the data and have organized it into alphabetical order and separated it into home matches first, select all the data and copy it into Excel. It might be easier to copy you into the same cells that I do, so that will get easier later on when I say press equals divided by B43, for example. So I copy the home data into cell N2. And just formatting the data here, initially I'm gonna delete the XG related stats. I'll you how to deal with them later on. And I'm going to do the same thing by copying in the away table here. And I'm just going to label these tables so I know which one is which and I don't get confused later on. The next thing I need to do is add two columns to these tables. A goals per game scored and a goals per game conceded. To work out the goals per game scored, do equals and then select the goals. 
divided by the games played. For my spreadsheet, that's T3 divided by P3. And for goals per game succeeded, it's the same thing, but goals against divided by matches instead of goals scored, which for me is U3 divided by P3. And you can simply drag those down or double click the corner of the cell to fill that in for the rest of the table. And once you've done that for the home, you can simply copy it over and paste it for the away table and all the data will transfer properly there. Okay, next thing we need to do is sort out sort of the template of how the spreadsheet's gonna look. How you want your model to visually look is up to you, but you can copy what I'm doing if you want it to look exactly the same as me. The important thing is where you put the formulas, but we'll get to that in a minute. I'm not gonna describe exactly what I'm doing though. If you're really that interested in having exactly the same format as me, you can pause the video and copy it into your Excel. All we want is a home team section, away team section, and a projected home team goals, and a projected away team's goal section. Plus we wanna make a little table that has the home win, way win and draw probabilities and we want two rows in that section one for the chance and one for the implied odds next thing we need to make is an under goals market table i make this for up to under 4.5 goals you can make it up to under 5.5 goals or higher if you want to but i personally don't see the need of that i don't use any strategies that go that high and again we want percentage chance and implied odds for this one once we've formatted that table we can simply copy it and paste it and change it to say over goal markets and the last thing we want to make is a correct score table and as you can see you just want to draw in here all the scores that are available in the bet for correct score market so the highest score is 3-3 free free, and then after that it's any other home win any other way win and draw so there's no point adding like 4-1 or 4-4 four four because that isn't a market that's available on bet for once you've got your layout for how you want your model to look the next thing to do is add in a coloring typically for some reason i have the home team in green the away team in red and the draw in a yellow color obviously you can choose your own colors and in the under and over goal markets i make each other line a different color just to separate it out a little bit and i make the headings gray and i make the background of the table blue again personal preference here once we're happy with how we want the model to look we next need to go back to the table where we've got our data and we want to have a row at the bottom of the table for the average and what we want to do here is have an average goals per game scored for the league and average goals per game conceded for the league both for the home and the away so as you can see i'm putting the equation in for the home there and then once that's done i simply copy it and paste it in the exact same position underneath the away table and then what we want to do is scroll down a little bit underneath where you want your model to be displayed. And this is where we put some data in, which will calculate your model results at the end. So we want to create a table of these six things. Obviously you can read them on the screen. I'm not going to reread them out. So you just want to write them in and then we can enter in the equations for each one of these six things, which will help determine the overall predicted chance of this game. Okay. Total average home goals per game scored. We can simply do equals and then it's simply equals and then select the cell where you've calculated the average home goals per game. W24 for me. And then it's the exact same for the away goals per game, obviously in the away table. <laughs> and these bottom four boxes, this is where the spreadsheet gets a little bit complicated. We have to enter quite a big formula here. So again, if you're not willing to enter this formula, I do have these spreadsheets available to download on my Patreon. But yeah, let's get into these complex formulas. What we want to do is write equals ifs, so that's I-F-S, open bracket, and then we want to put A2. A2 is simply where you're going to enter which home team you want to be selected for the game. And then you want to put equals again. And then in quotation marks, you want to put the first team alphabetically for that league that you're using. So for the Premier League, that's Arsenal, and then close the speech marks, then put a comma, and then we want to select Arsenal's average goals per game scored at home. So for me, that is cell W3. That is quite complex. You don't need to understand exactly what's going on. If you're really interested, you can research about the IVS equation on Excel, but I'm not gonna go into that in detail here. All you need to do is simply copy the format that I'm using here. We need to repeat this same equation for all 20 teams in the league. So as you can see, it goes comma, A2 equals speech marks, Aston Villa, comma, then the average goals per game for Aston Villa, then comma, A2 equals, and it goes so on, as you can see here, until we've got all 20 teams for the league, which is the Premier League. That's what that looks like. So if you just want to pause the video and copy that into your cell, three or three, I'll be here waiting for when you come back because we've got another three of these to write in the next three cells. So for the average away team goals per game conceded away, we just want to copy the cell from above into this cell and we just need to change all those average goals per game scored cells into the average goals per game conceded for the away team so from my spreadsheet that is cells aj so as you can see i'm replacing all the w's with aj's the next thing because this cell is related to the away team all the a2s also have to be changed to whichever cell you have your away team selected as so in my spreadsheet this is selected as cell a2 changing all those values now and Again, after I've changed them, feel free to pause the video and copy this into your respective cell. 
in your spreadsheet. For the average away team goals per game scored, this is identical to the cell above, the average away team goals per game conceded away. We just need to change those AJ values into whichever cell you have selected for the average goals per game scored away. So for me, that is cell AI. If you're using the same form that I'm using, it'll be cell AI for you. And the final one is the average home team goals per game conceded at home. So this will be the same as the average home team goals per game scored at home. So we've got the A2 back in there. All we need to do is change that W cell. And in my spreadsheet, that's been changed to an X. Filling out those four cells is the most time consuming part of this spreadsheet. So if you've got this far, you're doing very well. And if we go into cells A2 and C2, if we put two teams in that league though, these six cells that we've just created will be able to be filled with data. So we have another four boxes to create, a four by two table here. What we want in these four boxes is home attack, away defense, away attack, home defense. In the home attack box, we want to put the average home team's goals per game scored at home, so in my case they'll be 37, divided by the average home goals per game scored for the league, which for me is cell B35. Away defense is away team goals per game conceded away, divided by the average home goals per game scored, which is B38 divided by B35. And away attack is B39 divided by B36, which is average away team's goals per game scored, divided by the total average away goals per game scored. And finally, for home defence, B40 divided by B36, which is the average home team's goals per game conceded at home, divided by the average away goals per game scored. For the entire league. If that's confusing to understand, just copy the cells. It will all make sense at the end. And once you've got this in there once, you won't need to think about it again. Just doing a little bit of formatting there. Next, we want to create a three by two table containing these things, projected home goals, projected away goals, and total goals. In the projected home goal box, we want to put in the following equation. E35 times E36 times B35. That is a home attack times by the away defense times by the total average home goals per game scored. For the projected away goals, we want to do E37 times E38 times B36, which is the away attack times by the home defense times by the total average goals per game scored across the entire league. For the projected total goals, it's a simple one here. You simply add the projected home goals with the projected away goals. The next thing you want to do is create this table that I'm creating now. And this is where we're going to use the Poisson distribution to calculate the probability of the home team and the away team scoring X number of goals. I typically go all the way up to eight goals. You can go higher or you can go fewer. I wouldn't recommend going too much fewer than seven. I'm just doing some formatting of the table here. Again, I put all the home results as green, all the away results as red, and all the draws as yellow. So I don't know if you can see what's happening with this table here. You can read off the top row, which is home goals, and you can read off the far left-hand column, which is the away goals, and then you can find the probability of a result occurring. So for example, if you want the two one at home, you go to the two at the top and down to the one, and that'll give you the probability of the game finishing 2-1 to the home team. But we've not got this table filled out yet, so let's fill it out right now. This is where we get to this complicated equation from earlier in the video. Now we need to type the equation in. Again, don't worry about what the each variable means. Just simply write the equation in. The equation is almost too confusing to read out loud. It's probably easier if you just pause the video, copy what I've got on screen now, into the same respective box on your spreadsheet. Make sure it's exactly the same, including those dollar symbols in there. And once you've entered it, you want to come to the top here in this drop down menu, change it from number to percentage. And then you can simply drag down to the bottom of the table and it will save you typing that same equation out eight times. You have to do a similar thing for the home team now. Again, simply pause the video, copy the equation into your spreadsheet, change the cell type to percentage, and then drag the data across for all eight possibilities. Now we've worked out the probability of the home team and the away team scoring anywhere from zero to eight goals. So for example, for this game that I'm showing right here, the home team have a 23.98% chance of scoring two goals and the away team have a 0.51% chance of scoring four goals. So now we need to work out the actual probability of a result occurring. So say for example, what's the probability of the home team scoring once and then also the away team scoring once at the same time, so the game finishing 1-1. Well to do that and to do anything like that in probability, 
probability, we need to find the outcome of two events occurring. You multiply the two probabilities together, which is what I'm doing on the spreadsheet right now. So to calculate the probability of nil-nil, I do E44 times F43, and just changing the format to three decimal places and into percentages. And then as you can see, I'm doing this for each individual score now by multiplying the probability of the two scores together. And we get a complete table showing the probability of every single outcome occurring in this football match all the way from 0-0 zero, zero to 8-8. Eight, eight. Don't think there's ever been an 8-8 eight, eight in football, surely not. So now we need to scroll back to the top of the spreadsheet where we created our template. Do you remember that? It feels like a long time ago now, doesn't it? And then in the projected home goals box, to simply do equals, scroll down where we have projected home goals and click that cell right there and repeat the same thing for projected away goals. I change the format to these to two decimal places. Don't have to do that. It won't make any difference. I just like the look of it. So next we need to work out the probability of a home win. So to do that, we click on this box here for home win and type in the equation equals sum open bracket and we want to select all the cells which are green or all the cells which are home wins and for the draw we do the same thing you know equal sum and add all the individual draws together work out the total probability of the game finishing in the draw and for the away we do the same thing again equal sum and then select all the cells where the away team win and then to work out the implied odds we simply do equals one divided by the chance and then we can change the formatting again there to two decimal places and they're the odds they are the implied odds of each team winning based off the previous goal data now let's look at the under and over goal market for the under 0.5 goals market you simply for the implied chance there's only one way the game can finish with under 0.5 goals, that's a nil-nil. So we simply just do equals and then select the box, which is nil-nil. For under 1.5 goals markets, we need to then press equals, sum, and select all the outcomes where the game finishes in under 1.5 goals, which would be nil-nil or one-nil to the home team or the away team. And then you repeat this procedure for all of the under the goal markets, so the under 2.5, 3.5, and 4.5, and however high you want to go. Simply just do equals, sum, and select all the possible outcomes which are under that goals. Once we've done that, we can convert these implied chances to implied odds by doing equals one divided by the chance. And then we can just drag that down to fill all of those boxes. For the over goal markets, it's much easier. We can simply just do equals one and then minus the under goals market. And then we can drag that down for each of the over goal markets. And again, the implied odds is worked out by doing the same thing, equals one divided by the percentage chance. For the correct score markets, we just do equals one divided by, and then we select the correct score from the table below. And then we get to the point where we get to any other home win. And in that box right there, we simply have to do equals sum and then select all the games where the home team wins that are above 3-2. So you know 4-2, 5-3, anything that's above 3-2. And then we do the same thing for the draw, selecting all the potential draws which are higher than 3-3. Three, three. So you know 4-4, four, 5-5 four, five, five, and so on. And then we do the same thing again with the away results. Select all the ones which are greater than the 3-2 to the away team. I'm just going to change them to two decimal places. And then the final thing you can do which is pretty cool is this data validation here. So you go to the data tab at the top and press data validation. Well that looks a little bit like this. This little box comes up. What we're doing here is making sure that this cell contain no other information other than a potential team from the league. Like when I showed you earlier in this video, we have this drop down of all the potential teams. So from the data validation tab, we want to select allow and select list from there. Click into source and then select all of the teams in the league. You don't need to change anything in the input message or error alert, just press OK. And as you can see, you get a drop down list of all the teams that are in the league. And as you can see, we can only select home and away teams in there. And if we try to type a team that isn't in the league, you'll get an error message on screen. This spreadsheet is now configured to predict results based on the previous goal scoring statistics for all the teams in the league across the entire season so far. As I said earlier in the video, you don't have to use the entire league's data statistics. You can use like the previous five games. I showed you how to do that on websites like Understats earlier. What I'm going to do now is show you how you can use this exact model based off XG instead of goals scored. So I'm just going to copy the spreadsheet so we have two identical spreadsheets. And then I'm going to go back to Understat, back to the home stats, select the entire table and copy it into Excel. As you can see, Understats table shows you the XG and XG again, but also annoying for us here shows you the plus and minus compared to the goals they've actually scored but what we want to actually do is delete all the plus and minuses for each of the xg stats as you can see which is i'm doing on screen so we just simply have the raw value of the xg they have accumulated 
both home and away. This is a bit of a tedious process, but you know, <laughs> you do it that often that you get used to doing this. All you need to do is select the XG and the XG against and copy it into the goals and goals against column from the original table. And the model will automatically work out everything else. There's nothing you need to change. And we just need to do the exact same thing for the away data. And then the model will then be showing you the data, the XG statistics instead of the goal statistics. And as you can see on screen now, I'm showing you the difference between the XG model and the goal scoring model. There is subtle differences, sometimes significant differences. So again, back to the early point about no models being working. This is just another piece of information you've got. You've got goal stats, XG stats, all this together helps you paint a picture to see if there's an opportunity there. Once we've got this model, the only thing that you need to change whenever you come to use the model is the data itself. So what I do after each week of fixtures, I just go into understart, copy the table, paste it into my spreadsheet, highlight the key stats, and then copy them back into that original table, overwriting what's already there. It's little work that you need to put in each week to make sure that the model is up to date and accurate. I'm showing you here a quick example of what this model actually looks like when you use it in the markets. So I'm showing you an up and coming game that's happening in the Premier League soon and comparing it to the odds that are on Betfair. You can see the similarities and differences between what the model suggests and what Betfair's odds are showing. And you can have as much fun with this as you want. I hope this video hasn't confused you too much. Again, if you simply just want to download the spreadsheets without going through the faff of making them, I've got them available to download on my Patreon. Many thanks to the people supporting the channel. It really means a lot. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you have a great day. Thank you for watching. See you next time.